Now what we're going to do is we're going to start off by assuming that the G values for each of these letters, the G values for each of these letters is going to be all zeros, all zeros. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to calculate the hash function for each of the words and we're going to keep going until we get to a collision. Once we get to a collision, we're going to say that that set of G values did not work. We need to increment the G values and try again. So we're going to come over here and we're going to take uterpy and we're going to pass it through the hash function. Remember the hash function, the hash function has three parts to it. It's the length of the word plus the G value of the first letter plus the G value of the last letter. Right now all our G values are zero. So if we want to calculate the hash function of uterpy, it's going to be seven because you can see uterpy has seven letters in it. Seven has not been previously used in our hash table, so it's okay. We then calculate Calliope's hash code. Hash code for Calliope is eight because it's got eight characters in it. Eight does not collide with seven, so we're good. And we just keep going here. And you can see we were doing really well till we got to Urania. When we did got to Urania, Urania has a hash value of six. Six was already used for Thalia. So now we have a collision. So now we have to give up on the G values of all zero and we need to increment one of the G values. The G value we're going to increment will be the U. And we will try U of zero. That had a collision. Then we try U of one. That will create a hash code of seven, but seven was already used, so it's still a collision. Sorry, we're incrementing the G value for U. And we're trying all these U G values for U. We're trying zero, one, two, three, four. Four is our maximum. Why is four our maximum? When we start the Sicelli process, we have to decide how high we're willing to go with the G values before giving up and going to the next one. Now, I've looked at the literature online. There does not appear to be any science behind choosing the max for the G values. It appears to be an art. We will, for the sake of our project, arbitrarily decide that four will be the max for our G values, okay? So write this down for your Sicelli project. You're gonna use the max G of four. Why four? Uh, why not? So we're gonna just say that that's going to be the max. We're not gonna have any G values past four, yes sir. Uh, we're just gonna arbitrarily decide. Now, you can see that we've gone through all the G values for you, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we still have collisions for every single one. So we've run out of G values for you. You see that, right? So what we have to do now is we have to go back to the previous word, and we're going to now change the G value for P and add, add, change that to a 1. And now we're going to go through that sequence. So let me just show you that process. I'm going to talk about that because that's a big source of confusion as to exactly what's happening. Here, we're changing the G values for P. And you can see 0 fails, 1 fails, and 2 fails. Sorry, 2 succeeds because 3 is OK to use in our table. And then we still have to go back and fit in Urania. And now we're going to start with the U values there again, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see this combination where the G value for P is set to 2 and the G value for U is set to 4 causes all the, the uh, original entries to have unique hash codes, which is what we're shooting for. Now, what's confusing here is the order in which these G values are being incremented. What's being suggested in this document is you start with the beginning letters and each time you run out, you go to the previous word and change that one. If all of those fail, I think you want to start with the end letters after that. If you want to use a different scheme for incrementing your G values, it's okay. 
I've even toyed with the idea of trying to set the G values randomly. I haven't tried that yet, but I encourage you to try that as an experiment. Here is the issue with Sicelli and one of the reasons why people don't like it. The performance of this algorithm runs in big O of exponential time. That's bad. And for the, because it runs in exponential time, it only works if the number of entries, the number of words, is what? Really small. So it only works for like two or three dozen at most. After that, it gets really hard. Would it be able to do it for the 52 or 53 words for Java? That would be really pushing it. Maybe that you could do it once. Um, but it, it's really kind of at its limit there. Okay? Yes, Miss Mila. So let's look over here. Uh, this rejection here, 10. Oh, it, it was rejected because, because all these, all these U values fail, all these, all these G values failed for U. So that means that this now has failed and we need to increment it to get to the next one. Does, does that make sense, Mila? No? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me show you a little. This is what confused students last year again, so let me just show you. So imagine that these are the table of G values. Here's P and here's U, okay? So we tried this. It, it didn't work. We tried this. It didn't work. We tried this. It didn't work. We tried this. Didn't work. We tried this. It didn't work, okay? The next thing we try, Mila, should we try 0, 0 again? No. no. We need to reject this p-value now and change it to a 1 and then try that next. If, if that fails, we need to try this next. And then we're going to try this next. And then we're going to try this next. And now if that fails, what's the next one we're going to try? 2, 0. You get the idea? Yeah. So Mila is asking, how do we know that we have to increment p? So it takes a while for you to understand why these words are being sorted first before we begin. And the answer is that the higher up you have are in the list, the more likely you're likely to have a collision because you're using letters that are more commonly used for the hash. And so you want your collisions to happen early. Why? Because then you can avoid having to do all this extra work. So as soon as you reach a collision, what you need to do is start messing with the G values for the beginning letter of the word that caused the collision. And when you run out of G values there, you need to backtrack and go up to the previous word and start messing with the G values for that word. In other words, here we had a collision. We tried out a whole bunch of G values. We failed. When we ran out, we want to backtrack up to the previous one. Sorry, it's over here. We want to backtrack up to the previous one and then start playing with the G values for polyhymnia. You've tried it already. Yeah, you've tried it already. So the, the, the tricky part of this is setting the G values to make it work. If you can't figure out the, the algorithm to increment the G values, Try random G values. See if you can get that to work. I suspect it'll take longer, but you get desperate enough, you could try that as well.